But let's begin with Harvard Law Professor Alan Dershowitz, who wrote the book Get Trump, and Fox News legal analyst Greg Jarrett, trial of the century author. Well, they got him, uh, uh, it seems, Professor. You know, uh, we don't have all the charges. We have four of the seven. I'd like to get the specificity within the indictment, as I'm sure you would. This should be the strongest indictment, the strongest case ever brought against either a former president or a potential presidential candidate since Richard Nixon. If this doesn't meet the Richard Nixon test, you remember Richard Nixon, you know, bribed, paid, destroyed evidence. If this doesn't meet that test, if this is not the strongest case ever, then obviously this will be seen by the public, Democrats and Republicans alike, as partisan justice designed to prevent the people from deciding who the next president should be and giving that decision over to judges, jurors, and prosecutors. That's a violation of the rule of law, a violation of the Constitution. So I wait with the bated breath to see whether the indictment in this case meets that very, very high standard of the strongest case in American history. If you're going after a man who's running against the incumbent president, it better be the strongest possible case. So far, I haven't seen evidence of that. Uh, New York Times, Greg, reporting Trump is charged with a total of seven counts, including willfully retaining national defense secrets in violation of the Espionage Act, making false statements and an obstruction of justice conspiracy, uh, according to people familiar with the matter. So, um, uh, you know, uh, on the surface of this, um, how do you not how do you not look at immediately begin the, the rightful comparison of Hillary Clinton and, and, of course, the top secret classified information on her servers that we're told that even they believed that foreign adversaries got a hold of. How do you compare it to that? How do you compare it to documents, top secret classified documents in four locations for Joe Biden if it's an obstruction charge? How do you say the deletion of 33,000 emails and the destruction of devices with hammers is not some type of obstruction charge? And how do you, how do you now compare and contrast the treatment of two Democrats and one Republican? Two systems of justice, Sean, one for Donald Trump and one for everybody else. Merrick Garland, the attorney general, is criminalizing a civil dispute over documents that's governed exclusively by a civil statute, the Presidential Records Act. That act means anything created during a presidency, whether it's classified or not, uh, can be maintained by a former president, period. But instead of seeking an injunction, let's say, or production of records in a civil court, let a judge hash it out, Garland chose to bastardize the law by raiding Trump's home and then seeking an indictment today. And it didn't matter that Trump was following the very same standard established by the Department of Justice itself a decade ago in the Bill Clinton case who kept classified documents. That was a standard endorsed by a federal court in Washington. Uh, the president can keep what he wants. But Garland didn't like that, and he doesn't care about the law, so he abandoned his own precedent because it's Donald Trump. This is selective prosecution. It is unequal justice. Yeah, it's okay for Hillary to mishandle classified documents, uh, no charges, for Joe Biden to do the same. But if Donald Trump does it, it's a high crime. You know, what about the obvious comparisons, Professor Dershowitz? Um, because I don't think you would have supported charges for Hillary or Joe Biden either, would you? No, I don't think we should be criminalizing these decisions to take either accidentally or deliberately material home. I believe that every single president in my lifetime, every single president has taken oh, some no. classified material with him. And remember, a president doesn't have to cooperate with people he believes are trying to get him. You have to show that he crossed the line into criminal obstruction, that defendants are entitled to be tough and to play hardball and to say, look, I'm not cooperating. I'm pleading the fifth. I'm pleading the fourth. I'm pleading the sixth. I'm getting tough lawyers. We're going to fight this. You don't have to be uh, Joe Biden and roll over and cooperate with the government. It is no crime to be tough and to resist you have to show that there was a 
corrupt motive. And if President Trump believes he had declassified the material before he left the White House, then he had no obligation to turn them over to the archives. So I, I agree with Greg. This is a civil case that should have been resolved civilly. And this better pass a very high standard if we're going to accept the administration going after people who are running against them. You know how serious that is when you have one administration criminalizing the actions of the person who threatens to undo the administration to make sure that Merrick Garland doesn't hold on to his job and the people at the top of the Justice Department don't hold on uh, to their job. You have to have the highest standards. That's why I call it the Nixon standard. Remember, they went after Nixon not because the Democrats wanted him out of office, but because his own party, the Republicans, believed that he had obstructed justice. Let's see if this gets bipartisan support. You know, Greg, in, in light of the Durham report that came out and all the real malfeasance that was described in that report, you know, everything from the double standard in terms of how they treated Hillary Clinton versus uh, what they did with Donald Trump, how this case never, ever should have been open. Operation Crossfire right. Hurricane. You have the entire media mob. I'm sure like we have going on as we speak. Uh, you have every left winger in the country. They're celebrating. They're happy, et cetera. But all of that, all of those lies told on all of those networks, broadcast and cable, and of course, you know, the Washington Post, New York Times, they got it all wrong, never should have been open. No apologies, no corrections, no new oversight, uh, no, tr no changes put in place to prevent something like that from happening again. And that leads into the pre-bunking of the Hunter Biden laptop story by the FBI. Uh, which I would argue had an impact on the 2020 election. Um, certainly, you know, telling big tech companies that, oh, you, know, you might be hearing, you know, might be a victim of misinformation and it may be about Hunter when they knew pretty damn well that that laptop was going to be leaked by Rudy Giuliani, who was then Donald Trump's attorney, and they knew had a copy of that laptop that they had verified themselves. So yet they're telling them, if you read something about Hunter, don't trust it. And that's how that story got censored, isn't it? You would think after all of this that has come out after so much time, maybe they would think that um, we shouldn't be acting this way, but it seems like there's more arrogance than ever before. Yeah, the Durham report was a damning indictment of corruption at the FBI and to some extent the DOJ. But, you know, corruption in the swamp runs deep. And make no mistake, this is all Merrick Garland's doing. As I said the other day, the most partisan attorney general in history, now together with a biased special counsel, Jack Smith, who has a history of abusing the law for political purposes. Uh, together, these unelected people are corruptly interfering in a presidential election. They're trying to eliminate Joe Biden's opponent, while simultaneously protecting Biden and his son. That's the only way that Garland hangs on to power. He has derailed the case against his boss and his family's influence peddling schemes, ignoring volumes of incriminating evidence that they sold out America to our nation's adversaries for millions of dollars in cash. How else, Sean, do you explain a five-year investigation with no criminal charges? And how do you explain how Joe Biden got so rich on a public servant's salary? All right, Greg Jarrett and Alan Dershowitz, thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.